Hey everybody, so today we're just going to go over something um, pretty basic, but it'll also have a good impact for anything that you guys want to do really in the future with your desktop, especially if you have like a pre-built or if you want to add like a graphics card or anything like that. That's just going to be showing you how to install one of these, and uh, this is a power supply. And it's a good way, especially if you're looking for one of those new RTX cards, if you could actually find one and get it ready for something like that. It's anything else that you guys may need to know about maybe installing one of these and what to look for when you're buying one. So let's just get right into it and we'll show you how to do it. All right, so first thing you want to do um, is obviously remove your case here. And you want to pretty much expose your whole entire case like this. This actually is a really good example of a power supply that you probably need to uh, redo or at least put out, especially if you're going to have a card, especially everything like this. This is probably what your typical like pre-built may look like. Anything really that would need a definitely a, a, an upgrade for your graphics card. So. You can see here we have basic everything. We have the basic stock cooler. A good rule of thumb, if you really see something like this, uh, we call them like ketchup and mustard colored uh, cables, you probably don't have a very good quality power supply. It's completely dead, and we need to replace it with one that's just a little bit of a higher quality, obviously. obviously. And just something I'll be ready for for any games that we're doing. If you're looking for any of the, the RTX cards and you want to really upgrade in the future, uh, a good one to, a rule of thumb at least to get is definitely to check out at least... Whatever card you're going to get, check out the power requirements for that necessary. The more the new NVIDIA cards are a lot more power hungry, so you want to definitely get one that's recommended. If you're going more the 3060 and below, go with a 650 watt. If you want to go 3070 and higher, um, I would probably go personally with a, with a 750 watt. You should still probably get one of those anyway because they're going to be more power hungry in the future. But if you're just going for a basic build, it's not too big of a deal. You can have a 650 watt, 550 watt. For this one, we're just going to be doing this because this is one we have actually available. We have, uh, it's a pretty good one. Uh, it's a Corsair uh, CX650M. What the M is going to stand for is modular. Now, a good a good reason to actually get a modular one versus a non-modular one. You can see this is semi-modular, which means it has uh, two cables that actually do come out of it. And these are the main two power cables that you're going to need, regardless of what computer you have. You're going to have the main board power, power cable, which is usually the 24 pin. It's like this. And then you're also going to have um, usually a four or eight pin uh, anything newer is probably going to have uh, about 8 pin for the CPU power. Um, so you want something like this, and what you can see is as you go, if you don't have as many connections or you don't have as many drives, and you don't have as many peripherals or RGB, um, you won't need as many cables. So if you're just plugging this in and you have maybe like an M.2 drive, and you just have a power, and you just have like a GPU, then you d just mainly need just one extra cable, which would just be for the GPU power. For this build, we can see we do have a hard drive that's actually here, just one, some mechanical hard drive. And we also have a CD drive. Don't ask how old this is. It's old, okay? But that's why it's here and that's why we're doing it. And um, so we just have, we can see the main ketchup cables. And that's actually a good indicator of which ones we need to replace when we take it out. For the manufacturers, you want to get one that has a rating on them. And you'll see them on the boxes. Something like uh, something like this, would, which would be good. You can see this one has an 80 plus bronze. I would recommend at least an uh, 80 plus certification. And um, you can get either a bronze, uh, platinum, or a gold, whichever one you want to do. Um, the higher, the better. And usually they do cover for warranty. This one covers five years. You can get a five or ten year warranty. Usually the ones you get um, are a little bit more expensive. are going to have a higher warranty. But they're definitely going to be higher quality power supplies. So you don't want just anything kicking out. Especially if you're getting an RTX card. You don't want any, anything kicking out at all. So what we're going to do now is um, we have our power supply here. And what you want to do is you want to check the card that you actually do have and to see if it's um, going to be, um, see how many pins it may also need as well. So we see the pins that we're going to put in for our card. I know this is 770, man. This is what I got. But this is a good example of one. So you're going to see a lot of cards, especially the RTX cards, are going to have um, dual 8 pins. Uh, this one has an 8 pin and a 6 pin. So when we get a power supply, we're going to be very aware that we need at least those to put in there for the GPU. That's not going to be a big issue. Decent quality ones are ones that you're going to buy and replace are going to have those pins. So we're not too worried about that. Let's take this out. And it's not too difficult. You can go from the side here. Usually there's a bunch of screws that actually do go on the side of the actual desktop itself. And let's just take it out. And uh, we'll also disconnect everything first. I guess we should disconnect first, which would make sense. So this is very easy. And it's going to be color coded for you guys to actually see at home. So this one will actually be all the ketchup ones need to come out. So ketchup, mustard color, nasty ones need to come out. And that's pretty obvious because they all trace back to the actual power supply, which is this unit here. Okay, so this is for the drive. You want to take it out. Just always be careful about some of these. Um, they're very easy to uh, damage any connections and ports if you're not careful. 
So make sure these all come out. So this is the power that's going, they're called SATA connections. And they're going to be powering like peripherals and they can also be powering like CD drives and hard drives, so very popular ones. Uh, we're also going to be taking out, looks like we have a, a mustard and whichever one are called black mustard seed cables. So let's do that. So we're going to take those out. This is the CPU power that we talked about earlier. And this is the big 24 pin one. What you always want to do, there's usually little latches on these, and you want to click the latch down and pull it out. So if we click the latch down and we just go a little bit up and down, a little bit of force, not a lot, and this will come up just like that. And since we don't have a modular power supply, you can see we have lots of extra cables, and a lot of them you'll see will be tied like this just for no reason, because that's just the way it is. And you see something's tangled here, so let's not rip out the wrong cable. And okay. So now we have our cables out that we need. There's only a few, so this one's actually more straightforward. So let's go take out the actual power supply itself. And it's only held in by a few screws, so let me put it to the side right here. So this one's held in by this. You can usually get a like a Phillips head screwdriver. It's pretty easy. Those are a few screws. And I'm just showing you, I'm going to be taking out one, two, three screws here. Just take out those three screws that actually were on the side there, and then this will just come up. Just like that. You can see all those cables that came up here. And this is what a power supply looks like, especially if it's nasty or if it's a non-modular. So you can see the difference between a non-modular and a semi-modular. Um, most of the time you'll see a fully modular. You can see with those on the more of the higher end ones that actually do have these cables modular, but it's pretty pointless. But the fans are located in different places as well, but we'll go over that. So you take this out, and we don't even care about it anymore, so we're gonna put it to the side. Right, once you get that out, you can put in your card or if you already have in your card, don't worry about it. We're not really going over really about card placement here or anything like that. We're just worried about mainly connections and connecting the actual cables itself. So um, something we can do, uh, we can see the thing barely fits, but that's good to talk about actually. So you want to know, okay, um, I have this. Um, so another thing to also mention, uh, especially talking about space, if we're looking at this, this is a graphics card, it's barely just fitting here. Which power supply is, is something like this going to fit? Is to, if I buy one, is it going to fit? which is the, the size of your case. So if you have an ATX case or an MATX case, most of the time you can buy any type of uh, ATX power supply and it's going to be fine. Like it says modular ATX power supply, which will be totally fine. If you have those really, really small cases that are like this big or, and they're called like ITX, then you might need to check to see if, they're, if it's gonna fit. Most of the time they don't fit um, full size power supplies like, like one of these in there, so you might have troubles. Otherwise, if you get this, it's a universal one fits all for ATX or MATX. Usually, it's, that's just the case for them. The fan placement is very important for circulation of your power supply because the power supply is the same um, type of anything with heat, any type of electricity. It's the same thing with the cooler, same thing with the graphics card. You want to have space and you want to push in and take out air. So when you have something like this, and you can see this is great. This actually has perforated holes that go through there. You don't want to be putting your fan up like this because the air is going to be blowing up this and this is going to be taking, then that air is going to be taken in by the graphics card cooler here and that's not good and you're pushing air back into the case. So when you have something like this, you, especially if you have perforated um, holes, you and most of the time you're going to be having any type of decent case will have perforated holes there. That's just for the power supply to be going in. So we can plug this in here and that would be the best way to go. But before we do that, I think it's easier to at least plug in the cables here before we put in the actual power supply. So you want to check to see what you have, and this is a great um, option if you have a, a semi-modular or modular power supply, is that you want to see it's very easily written. This is peripherals and SATA, and it also says uh, the, the PCIe, which is basically the graphics card, and then the CPU, if there's any extra power that would be needed to, to go to there. So what do we have? We have a graphics card that, has, that requires a certain amount of pins, and we have uh, one SATA connection that should be good for um, for these two. It should connect these two, so one and two. We will, it usually comes in a line like this. So we're going to get our cables and plug those in first. So usually you have a cable like this. This is for your drives. It kind of looks like the ketchup mustard one we had before. And this is going to be connecting from here to here, just like that. I know it's not the greatest one, especially that this is in the way. But we'll see if we can hide something in the back there. Maybe we can push this through and make it a little bit nicer. You always want to try to make the cable anything the cable is just a little bit nicer so when you have one so we know we have a peripheral SATA which is a SATA and that's the hard drive and it's the connection to the actual CD-ROM you'll see it looks kind of like this it usually has a little um, curve at the very end like that uh, it's a little hard to see but 
it has a little curve at the end. It only fits one way, so there's no other way to really do it. So we'll be plugging this in. This will be from the power connector to the power supply, and we'll be going around like this. Um, let's see if we can get it good, but we're not worried about it now. So we have one of those, and we also need one for the graphics card. So, and that's all the cables you need. You know they'll give you usually a bundle in the bag. You shouldn't have to buy any separate cables themselves. If you do have to buy separate cables, you need to make sure that they are compatible with your power supply. So if you want an extra um, extension cables or anything like that, make sure they're really compatible with the power supply. Sometimes you'll plug this in and you'll get a Corsair one versus like an EVGA one. It might not fit the exact power supply that you have. So let's get the GPU cables. And usually they come with uh, two attachments on them. So you usually just need one cable for, for both. So that you can put both... Uh, connectors into the graphics card. So now since this is a little bit of a higher power, you don't want to plug this into SATA ones. You want to plug this into the PCIe one. And it's going to fit. I mean, obviously it's it's different. It has an extra power connection there, an extra slot. So we're not worried about that. We're just going to plug this in like this and we're good to go now. So we're just going to slide this in here. All right, we have it in. It fits pretty well. And we're going to put in the three screws we had on the side. Actually, I did want to show you one thing before we do anything else. If you want to test your power supply, make sure it turns on. Um, there's You don't need all these cables in. These cables are all just going to be powering on other things. Whenever you get a new uh, power supply and you just want to make sure it works, the best thing to do is just to use two cables, which is the cables that are already put in there, and there's you can't remove them. Um, this will be the 24-pin and the 8-pin for the CPU or the 4 and 4, whichever you have. So you want to plug this one in first. You'll see it just go right in. And you want to plug this one in. And we're not doing cable management yet because we're just testing this. And, and you definitely want to make sure you use the cable that they provided. So you want to plug this in to the back. All right. And then we can just plug this in anywhere. And we just want to make sure this thing actually turns on. If there's any light or anything like that before we go any, any further. Because then you could have a bad power supply or something like that. You see there our fan to spin. But that's good. So we know at least the power supply works. It's powering it on. So now we can unplug it. And um, anytime you're ever testing it, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you drain it always because we did just touch it. So you want to hold the power button on for maybe 10 to 15 seconds just to drain all the power actually out of the whole system. And once that's done, uh, we can go ahead and take up the cables. And we want to make these look a little bit nicer. Again, it's optional, but you probably should do it anyway, you know, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So we know this is going to go here, but we don't want this just flapping around out here. So maybe what we can do is maybe just tuck it in some slots there and just whatever case you have, that's what you have to work with. So there's nothing, <laughs> there's not a whole lot you can really do, but um, you can also just try to tie it back and everything. We're just doing more of a talking point really for this and to show you guys how to install. Um, it's up to you if you want to put the effort in for this. I'm just doing this real quick. This is just a quick little, make it's not too sloppy, but <laughs> make it somewhat presentable. Um, just tuck it under there. I'm not going to worry about it. So those are the two power connections again that we just plugged in. And we also have just the SATA ones. And this one's going to be a little bit ugly because it's not too much we can really do with this. Maybe I can go in like this. Something, and again, your case will vary. So Maybe I can go this way and then up and over like this would make it a little bit nicer. Go like that. And then maybe let's try to go around town. Here. Oh, this is barely gonna. Oh, it's just gonna reach. Nice. Oh, let's plug in the graphics card again. We're also gonna have the power connectors for the GPU. So you can see there's two, and this will vary, of course, whichever you do. So, so plug in, I guess, the last one first, and you just want to slate these in. They're not. It's not the greatest thing. That's how they make these things. It's kind of it's not the greatest, but it's what we have. And you'll notice there'll be on your graphics card a little slot that just makes it easier. I mean, you could you could flip it and see which way it'll fit in there. But uh, we'll go this for now. Okay, so that's fits. That's two. Um, we can try to tuck this in. <laughs> I'm not really showing you cable management here. I'm just showing you guys how it works. So now we know that we have this plugged in and we have our, our eight pin up here. And we also have a 24 pin, which is the main thing for power and use. 
And now we also have our CD-ROM if we have one, obviously, I don't know why we even have one showing this video, but anyways, we have one and we also have a hard drive here. And so those things, so when you power it on, you're going to have a hard drive working, you're going to have this working here. And now we also have the last cable, which would be the graphics card. If you have any other drives, if you have RGB, anything else, you would be using more or less and more SATA cables. Um, sometimes you might see ones that look like these. These are Molex cables. They're usually for more of a legacy devices. Um, and you just have usually extra ones that come in your bag. You just have extra ones that come in any of the module ones that have extra ones. So everything looks good here, at least for the install wise. We look pretty good. And what we're going to do is just turn it on and uh, see the light show. But I mean, there's no lights, no RGB on this one. So, and we're going to just power it on and everything should come on fine. Just like that. I uh, would show you the, you can kind of see the GPU fan spinning there. Looks good. And then we have a hard drive plugged in and that's how you do it. But I uh, really hope you guys enjoyed watching. And subscribe for more content. We like to do desktop builds, liquid spills, and um, all those great things. Uh, check out our store. We actually just recently uh, launched it. So check it out. The link is in the description below. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy watching. And uh, thanks a lot.